My name is Ana Delgado Ortiz. I was born in Puerto Rico, and at the age of six, we moved to Chicago. We lived in Chicago for one year, and then after that, we moved to the Bronx, New York, to Fulton Avenue. I was raised by a single mother. My mother worked. She came to this, she worked all her life. And the living conditions, they were okay. And then my mom got an apartment like a few blocks away from my uncle. And we were living okay. It was humble, but it was it was okay. We we had what we needed. I met Ray, Ray Senior in elementary school. That's where I met him. I was born in Caguas, Puerto Rico and moved to the Bronx, New York in 1969. We were living in the South Bronx, Claremont Avenue. Well, actually it was Kelly, Kelly Street. That's where we first moved in. We were living in a basement. In the 60s and the 70s, the area wasn't that great. That was the era of, of, of the drugs and gangs. And I attended PS42. It was elementary. I went there from kindergarten to the second grade. He was friendly, but I didn't pay attention to him. He had red hair. <laughs> he had like a mullet. <laughs> then when we started junior high school, he did a 180. And... He changed completely. He didn't look like himself at all. Went to uh, Roosevelt, to Fordham Roosevelt, also in the Bronx. Well, we were just going to school. We were young, 17 years old. After work, I used to go see her. We were friends because we lived in the same neighborhood. After that, we had uh, Ray Jr. at the age of 17. I got pregnant at 17 years old with my son, Ray Jr. My name is Ronaldo Ortiz Jr., born and raised in the Bronx. New York, actually. I was going to school in the beginning, but then I stopped because my mother, my mother was old school and she said she couldn't keep me in the house. So she spoke to Ray Sr. and I had to move in with him and his parents. We lived in my mother's house in my room that I had because you know, I couldn't afford, uh, I wasn't working. <laughs> Still in high school. The job I had was part time and it was hard because I didn't have help from nobody. Just his, you know, his father, Ray Sr. I didn't have help from no one. Nobody helped. Nobody ba babysat for him. Nobody did nothing. Whatever he had, we gave it to him. My first living space was in Morrison. I lived in 1171 Morrison Avenue. Grew up there probably till I was 10. I, I, I got on public assistance. Color money, not European money. I mean, I don't. I'm not ashamed to say it. I got on public assistance. They didn't give me much because they didn't give you much. But his father, Ray Senior, always worked. The second child came. It was tight. Hi, my name is Jessica Ortiz. I was 19 years old when I had Jesse. I definitely was born in the Bronx, born and raised. It was hard. Two babies, especially when I needed to step out to do anything, I had to bring both of them with me. Growing up in the Bronx at that time, you're talking about, you know, late 80s, 90s. Wow. It was a lot. Because at that time that we had them... We lived in a in the hood, if you could call it. The crack was, you know, by, uh, around the neighborhood, gangs. So, you know, there was a lot of poverty, of course, drugs, violence, not... Not like what you see in the movies, not like that, but. At that time in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, we had to worry about coming across needles and stuff in the playgrounds. Um, so my mom's always made sure she would go in the playground and make sure everything was cleared out before we got on any swings or run around or anything like that. My parents were very strict when it came to me being outside because where we lived at, you know. My kids never stepped out of the house without me or or, or their father, Ray, Ray Senior. They were not able to go outside on their own. I kept them upstairs because I was afraid that something would happen. The obstacles living in the Bronx were just trying not to get in trouble, not to get caught up in the street. You outside, you're gonna get in trouble. The gangs, selling drugs, doing things that you're not supposed to. It was very easy to do that. You have. Uh, access to a lot of things that you shouldn't have growing up in the in the Bronx. And then things started getting better. I was able to own my own tractor trailer, making much more money. Then Charles also came into the picture. My name is Charles Ortiz. Charlie was born 
On August 27th, 1988, Bronx, New York. We were still living in the Bronx in that one bedroom apartment until we got our own home. I was able to buy my own home, a three family home in the Bronx by Noble Avenue. I started living in Lafayette and Noble at eight years old. I moved to Lafayette and Noble right after my freshman year in high school. Lafayette and Nobu is our old neighborhood, right? I, you know, Morrison is not that far. And I grew up in Bronxdale Projects where my grandmother lives and, uh, or she used to live a few blocks away. So, you know, it was like coming back to the neighborhood. Uh, so everybody done and had their own room. Um, it was a new area, still in the hood, but it was a new area. And we've been here after that. Again, I was excited. You know, I, I had my sister, but now I got a little brother. We came from here and we are up here. One thing I can say about my brother, he's a, a talented individual. He's very artistic. I started designing clothes at 12 years old. My older brother started helping me around like 13 because he actually liked some of the designs. The first actual piece that me and him designed together was a 9-11 burgundy and beige button up t-shirt. He was going to the club and he actually wanted to match a pair of Timberland field boots. Starting a brand with my older brother was pretty cool. That was a lot for him because, again, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I was looking at it as an opportunity. And at the time, at the time, a friend of mine was, again, doing the marketing for a rugged throne artist. So the opportunity I seen there was to make money and build the brand and have some of these celebrities wear it. So it kind of drew a wedge in our relationship and we stopped doing it for a while. And then we came back, you know, more like a real clothing line and we started getting manufacturers and started screen printing and we were making clothes just like your, your brands you see today. How do I feel of my progression in life? I feel great. Ray Jr. is the type of individual that when he wants to accomplish something in life, he's a go-getter. He says, I'm gonna do this. He does it. I have family members my age. I have people, you know, I grew up around and, and I see them to this day and they're still in the same position that they were 20 years ago. There's nothing wrong with that, but for me, I'm always trying to progress. The chain is broken. When we came here, we were immigrants. Let's say not had a lot of resources. So now the outcome of him is going to come out in my grandkids and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. It's going to be different. You know, he's a firstborn, so you know, everybody got to follow him. First he showed me that if you work hard and you, like my other half always say, do what you need to do so you could do what you want to do. I think he became a good man because he takes care of his family. I thank my older brother, Ray, for being a, a big brother to me. I'm very proud of Ray Jr. being my son. And I'm proud of Say to this day, that's my son. I'm proud of my son and what he has accomplished. I'm proud to say that I'm Ray Ortiz Jr.'s mother. I am who I am because of Lafayette and Noble. And that's the story. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,